So, welcome YouTube, welcome IG if you're coming from IG, and welcome Twitch if you're coming from a Twitch. So, Dr. Swole here, aka EJ. Um, here, this is the fear, a motivator, or discourager, the greatest path to physical therapy stream. Um, so, this stream is going to be where I share knowledge, or this segment of my channel is going to be where I share knowledge of what I've learned over time. Um, or while I was in, while I'm in physical therapy school, I start in the fall. Woo woo, go Rattlers! Um, and so in this segment, we're gonna talk about. First, I'm gonna introduce myself. Talk. This is my first time doing the live stream, or doing the segment. Um, so I really want to introduce myself. Make sure everybody knows who I am, where I come from, a little bit about myself, my path. I'm gonna share a little bit of knowledge on the importance of goal setting, short term and long term. And also, I want y'all to gain or start to gain the mentality of you can do hard things so that's two things to learn and one thing to do two things learn about me learn about goals and one to do learn uh, adapting that mindset so that you can do hard things and grow from wherever you are and where you start off in life um so just to get started let's hop on in it um and the introduction of me so me um I am 26, married, um, went to Florida State for undergrad, studied exercise physiology. Um, I played football while I was there and also was in the ROTC program, played for two years, um, was an ACC champion, so, you know, I was there when we were good. So, if you watching us now, we got some room to improve, but we'll get back there. Um, during that time, I also did ROTC, um, and I was a scholarship recipient for the three and a half year scholarship, so... I may uh, even drop a little bit of knowledge uh, later about uh, that process and everything like that. And also, this fall, I'll be going, I brought it up a little bit earlier, going to FAMU for a doctor of physical therapy school. So can't wait to share that experience with you guys. I'm super excited. I think I'm about three or four weeks away from moving there. Um, and yeah, so to get started into the segment, I always want to start off with the mindset um, that I adapt with my life and I always like to think of it like track so in track we all have lanes um, and, and, and if you get out of your lane during any time during a race you're disqualified and in life if we start following other people looking at their paths how they got it how they're doing this they got this done they didn't get this done oh I won't do that you start looking at all these other people yes you can learn from them but you don't want to start going into other people's lanes and doing things that aren't yours isn't how you want to get to wherever we all want to get to that finish line but you can't get out of your lane and how you want to accomplish or get to that goal and also with track you can get disqualified but you can always try for the next event the next meet and so in life sometimes we get off track right we get out of our lane and we find ourselves thinking that that that's it it's over and in life, I want you to know that there are obstacles, there are mistakes, there are paths that deviate from where we want to get to, but we can always keep trying to get to that finish line. And so that's one thing that I want us to take away from this is that analogy of that that lane. Where, do, How do I want to get to where I want to be? And fear, the net title of this um, segment or this uh, video is going to be fear a motivator or a discourager, the greatest path to physical therapy school. And the reason I said call it the greatest path to physical therapy school is because it's your path. I'm sharing my path, but how you get to physical therapy school or owning your business or whatever career path you want to get to, that's going to be the greatest path. The greatest path is your path. Um, and something that always stuck with me is, um, and I always lean back to my foundation, is a proverb. It goes, trust in the Lord with all with all thine heart and lean not unto you thy own understanding and in all ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path and other versions say will make the path straight right um and no matter where you're going in life it may not seem like you're on the straight path you may seem like you are not going in the direction that you want to go but what you're not realizing is that you're actually right where you're supposed to be it may not feel like you're close or as close to where you want to be or where you're gonna be but you're actually right there straight on that path and I always like to lean on my foundation when it comes to uh, struggles and things that I'm dealing with in life and this is not in any way a sermon uh, I, I acknowledge and accept all belief systems paths uh, and religions 
and I just wanted to kind of share that when I'm thinking about life and how I'm moving forward, I always lean back on my foundation. Um, so continuing with that, um, I just kind of want to start off with my journey. We've done a little bit of here and there about, you know, um, where I started, school I went to and everything. But I kind of want to see like where to show y'all or share with y'all how I got to where I am today and the the lessons that I've learned. And the I want this to bring back to where I said that your path is straight and that wherever you are, it may not feel like you're closer to where you where you want to be or how you're going to get there. But all of these different steps and all of these different places that you end up, there's a lesson there. There is a takeaway. There is something that will get you, make you stronger, make you wiser, make you what a skill that you may need or a perspective that you may need to gain from this experience that doesn't seem like it's relevant. You know, I have a few things that I'm going to share about my path and my journey that I didn't think would get me to where I am today. And I'm actually going to start with my dad. So when I was 11, my dad got me and my sisters all together. And he said, where do you want to, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? And I'm 11. So I said, I want to play football. I was like, I don't want to play football. I want to go to the NFL. I want to be a superstar. Um... I want jersey name on the back. I, that's what that's what I want. I told him I want to play football, and he was like, "Okay, um, we're short. Uh, you're good, but we need some concrete. You need a plan B, which really for him is my plan A." And so at that time, um, I said business. Um, we did the magnet program here in Florida, um, where the school has like special classes that you know help you or learn or give you a perspective on different careers and things like that. So I started with business, shifted from business and went to law. And um, after that, I switched and said, okay, settling in on being a doctor. Um, And one thing with my dad is he's a big money guy. Um, All right, well, you want to be a doctor? Well, be the highest paid doctor. You want to be a lawyer? You know, all these careers, he's like, be the best. My dad's always about being the best or and it's because he has this mindset that like there's nothing we can't do um and i adapted that of like hey like if i want something you go get it and i I really got that from him um because things you don't let the light what's around you dictate uh your circumstances and but one thing that i that's how I perspective what he was saying, um, but a lot of it always came back to money. And so one thing I wanted to share or I heard in a song and it really made me look into the actual full quote was a song by Logic, the rapper. Um, it's The song is Logic, the Incredible True Story, and he brought a quote in from Alan Watts. Um, and the, if you go to search on YouTube, Alan Watts, what if money was no object? Uh, I'll just read... Um, this little part where he says better to have a short life that is full of what you like doing than a long life spent in a miserable way and the full expert excerpt is him talking about asking people what do they want to do for the rest of their life what do they really want to do not what pays the most money and when they said forget about money forget about money what do you want to do and they said art they said painting they said music they said all these different like hobby what people would consider hobby type things and he said all right well if that's what you want to do with the rest of your life then do it and forget about the money and you know in reality you know people you know still are like well i still gotta pay these bills and it's if you really enjoy something you will find people and this is all in his quote so this is not me this is like you will find people that will also enjoy what you like doing and you will find people that are so interested that they will pay you to do said thing if you enjoy it enough um, and if you really love doing it. And so in life, we we lose the passion. We lose the, this is what I really want to do and we start chasing the money. And money will end up, you know, you're, you're continually, like he was saying, spend your life in a miserable way because you're taking the job that gives you the check. You're taking the opportunity that gives you the check. 
it's not necessarily what you want to do so you can find yourself complaining about the quality of work the employees the work schedule the whatever but when you really love to do something you're waking up early in the morning late at night and you just can't get it off your mind you're talking about it you're you you forget you know you ever realize like you're waking up monday morning and or you know if you work at night and you're dragging to work or whatever but then all of a sudden when you're having fun with the friends or doing all this other stuff you have all this energy because getting up at 8 a.m on a vacation ain't the same as getting up at 8 a.m on work but why can't they be the same why can't what you wake up in the morning wanting to do be this feel like a vacation or feel like you know something you really want to do or something that you're excited to do every single day um when i did my observation hours for pt school i was getting up at five in the morning to set up you know first patients at eight but you got to make sure the equipment's set up you got to make sure the um you know the line the equipment set up the exercises are determined what you're going to do i'm gonna get kind of getting getting further into the uh to segment so let me not go too far but you know you really want to make sure that you're not chasing money but you're chasing passion you're chasing what you really want to do and it takes research it ta you got to really find out that do you really want to do this so it may take a little bit more effort to find out what really do you you know desire to do for the rest of your life um but going from there um i was also always a risk taker um, one of the biggest risks I took was actually playing football for Florida State. And the reason I was so, so much of a risk was because we didn't have the money to pay for school. Um, I got accepted, super excited. Um, I chose Florida State, um, because I was like, I want a good education and I do want to go to a big name school. Um, but I also want to play football. So I was like, I'm going to walk on. And a lot of people, they're like, oh, you know, you got to accept it for your athletic ability. You know, you're just so good, whatever, and that's why you got in. I'm like, just, I'm going to read these numbers or say these numbers out loud. I'm 5'5". Five, five. At the time, I was probably 140, 145 pounds. Ran a 4'3", 4'4", 40. Really good. Um, bench press 280 because I know I didn't get to the 300s till after playing football. Um, squatted 350, 360 max. Um, cause again, I didn't get to the 400s until once I got to Florida state and power cleaned like 240 and my vertical was like a 30, 40, which for somebody who's six foot, a 30, 40 inch vertical for a five, five guy, I'm at their hand when they barely jump. So it's like this, these numbers may be all amazing, but when you say it out loud, it's like, oh, well, he's only five, five. So all these things are in perspective. Like moving a 300 pound guy, moving a, you know, 250 pound guy who's six foot two or running or whatever. It's like, hey, you're fast. Okay, cool. Oh, you're strong. All right. But like, that isn't the only thing that got you, that got me there. You know, it was determined. It was the determination. It was the doing the things that were uncomfortable. It was the doing the things that were weird. It was the doing the things that no one else would do. Um, when I initially um, started playing football, I was as skinny as my sister and I wish I, this, I had a picture to show. I was as skinny as my sister. And uh, my wife actually was talking about it yesterday. Because um, my sister was over and we were all talking about it. It's like, I'd be as skinny as her if I didn't play football or if I didn't work out. Um, and what I did was, when I went to the first football tryouts when I was in high school, I left the tryouts and I saw that all the kids were bigger than me. I, I was fast, sure, that was cool. But I saw they were bigger than me. I couldn't even bench press the bar. Um, it's funny that my name on this is now Dr. Swole. Um, but I couldn't even bench press the bar. And when I left practice, I started doing push-ups every day. And I would do them when I woke up. I would do them when I went to dump the trash. My mom would be like, hey, go jump the trash. And I was like, all right, do 10 push-ups. And I go dump the trash, get to the trash, do five more push-ups, whatever. And then I had a pull-up bar. And every time I left my room, whether it went to the bathroom, go get something to eat. I do pull-ups, uh, random number, but there were times because I was so disciplined and that's something that you need discipline. I was so disciplined that I would hold it like using the bathroom until I really had to go because I was like, man, if I leave, I have to do these pull-ups. I have to do these push-ups. And I didn't even play football that year. Um, I think I made the team, but I got in trouble a lot growing up. And football was like the first thing that got taken away because my parents knew 
out of everything, I lo- I wanted to play football. You you could take away anything, but you take away football, you're taking something that means something to me. And uh, but I kept training even when I didn't play. You'd see me in the street doing sprints down the street um, and everything like that. And so from then on, um, like we'd go to restaurants. And we'd get out of the car and I'd do push-ups right before we went to the restaurant because I didn't want to lose that time. you lose those reps. Um, and so soon after, and this is really years after, my dad went back and he was like, all right, you got accepted to school. You're about to leave the house. All right, you got to make a 20-year plan. And 20-year plan for a 17, 18-year-old is... Like, what? I was mad. I was mad I had to make that plan. I was like, oh my God. Like, no one else has to do this. Like, he didn't have my sisters do it. So I made the 20 year plan. It was getting into med school. It was like always med school and football. Med school, football. And every year I was like, this is when I, I, I even did my research on football because I didn't get a scholarship. I didn't, I had to try out. I didn't get a scholarship. I did research. How do you walk onto a football team? Because again, five five, hundred forty pounds, you're not a high, you're not a five star recruit. And uh, so I looked up the in, in my twenty year plan. I had month by month what I did every month. I looked up clubs at FSU. I looked up workshops at FSU. I looked up and then and the workshops and stuff was for medical school. I looked up groups and all the other stuff. And every year. In springtime, I put tryouts. First year, I put tryouts. Second year, I put tryouts. Third year, I put practice. I said, there's no way that me trying every single year that by the third year, I am not on the team. And I actually made it the first year. I made it the first year that first spring. And funny thing and funny thing about it, I'm going too far. So yeah, I made it. I made it my first year. And, um, yeah, I, the risk that I was taking when it came to football, though, because I haven't even gotten to that, and that's where I started at, was, again, we couldn't afford to pay for school, and I didn't have a job. I just had loans, had student loans, and the loans weren't enough to cover my meal plan and my living, and so I had, I want to say, close to five three to five thousand dollars of student debt and at fsu the policy is after a semester if you haven't paid all your debt you can only get one chance to lift that hold and i was doing army rotc because i didn't get the scholarship for that initially either and this isn't advertisement it's just only water we got um and uh so i'm doing the football tryouts or i'm preparing for football tryouts and doing army rotc and uh, my dad's calling every week. Yo, you got to get a job. You can't. I, I can't pay for this school. Like my phone's getting cut off every other uh, every other week. I was using the apps to text people. You know, giving different numbers to my college friends. Like, hey, this is my new number for the week because I'm using Wi-Fi to text and stuff. I didn't have the money. Um, and uh, we uh, it was like football tryouts were going on dad's still calling telling me i needed to get a job because the hold got lifted so i got the next semester but summer summer classes and fall classes i couldn't register because you know, they only lift the hold one time and the week i made the football team is the same week that the army told me you got the scholarship and so what i had to do for the army was i had class on saturday was football game so on sundays we had to clean the stadium and pick up the trash to make money for it and it, you had to do extra stuff you know, to say that you really want the scholarship. And so I did all the extra stuff. I went to the field training exercises. I did the Wednesday stuff. I did the all the extra stuff for the Army to say, hey, kept the grades up. And, uh, yeah, earned the scholarship. And I was, I was like, I can relax. Not relax, but, like, I the money's not an issue. I can register for classes because I didn't want to get accepted to the, the football team. And then I can't even pay for the school, so then I'm kicked out. And it's like, man, that went out the window. And so, um, that was kind of the risk with football, was just like I didn't have the money for it. Um, 
and with um the one thing I wanted to add with that with the twenty year plan, which I've taken and kept with me, is you plan for disappointment. You you plan for things not to work out. You hope and you work for success. But in your plans, when you're making something happen, you want to know that it might not. And you got to know what you're going to do when it doesn't work out or if it doesn't work out. Because you lose a lot of momentum when you put all your eggs in that it's going to work out. Now, I'm not saying all your eggs and change the plan. I'm saying like, um, like I'm not saying change your plan. Like you should have a backup plan for a new course of direction. If this is what you want to do. Okay, hey, that doesn't work out. Okay, next year I'm doing this, this, doing this. Because it was like, like I said, every year I said I was going to make, make make the football team. And by the third year, there's no way I didn't make it. And so I planned to not make it. I planned to, the first year it didn't work out. Second year it didn't work out. It's like third year, there's no way. And I kept that with everything. Um, even when it came to like applying to medical school and everything like that, though, I'll get to PT school because when PT school came around, I said I'm I am working my butt off to get in the first first time. Um, and when with making the football team and just in life in general, because again I'm sticking with my life, my my path, but I also at some point in the fall or spring. I put a Facebook post out there and I said, hey, I need somebody to throw me a football. I need, because I, again, first freshman, so I didn't know a lot of people. And I said, I need someone to throw a football. I need someone to do drills with me. Um, you don't got to be Tom Brady. You don't have to be um, Champ Bailey at corner. You don't have to be, you know, I'm trying to think of anybody big at the time, you know, but um you know, you don't have to be a five-star recruit or anything. That I just need somebody to put the ball in the air, because on plans and goals in life, and no matter wh- what it is or where you're going, you're at some point you got to know when you got to ask for help. You got to know when you're not growing anymore, and when you're not m- taking any steps towards anything. When you get comfortable or too comfortable, like even I'd say even this video right here, it's 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 different to be sitting in front of a screen and talking to people and telling them about my story or my life or things I've learned but you need to take that risk and also know when to ask for help um that was a big struggle of mine when I was an undergrad because I'd struggle in class and I'll just go to the library and study for nine eight nine ten hours and even in study groups I would study the whole night before so that when I came to the study group, I knew exactly what everything was. So I was the one asking all the questions. Burns you out when you know you need help and don't ask for it. So know when to ask for help. Know when you need to add a challenge and plan for disappointment. Uh, Those are three things with goal setting that you should always keep with you because you always want to be moving towards something you always want to be growing you always want to say okay well that's long term what little things that makes it easier to get to wherever i'm going um and so with the army and the scholarship and getting it paid for another thing is when you have a goal or something that you want to do talk to people about it you don't know who along this path may be able to help you get to where you want to go. When I was doing my army training, I had to do the phys- physical training in the morning, classes, Wednesday lab training, and the weekend cleaning the stadium, which I'm cleaning the stadium for the team I want to be on, you know. And um, the I told everyone in Army ROTC, I want to play football for Florida State. I'm trying out for the team in the spring. And so when we did physical training in the morning, they were like, you said you want to play football for Florida State? Well, then get down. Go. Push. Go. No, run harder. You know, they, yeah, I was going hard. But they'll, they were like, you got to go harder than that. You know, you got to push a little bit more. And I was doing the physical training for Army ROTC. And I was doing the football workouts on my own before I even made the team. And I was hitting the gym, lifting weights and doing all that stuff and going to class. 
And they were still telling me, you got to go harder than that. You got to bring it every day, you know? And so it was great to have those people, those positive people saying like, I'm not going to let you settle. I'm not going to let you be average, you know, and, and accept where you're at. And we're in a group of 30 people and they're calling me out, you know, you need that. Um, and there was by, and we'll, we'll go back to this or come back to this in the future in a little bit more detail. Um, when I played football, I ended up tearing my ACL and, um, one of the favorite things I was, I was the yeller when it came to running and one of the favorite things I ever told them while I'm running, cause I'm the motivator. I'm like, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Bella. You got it. You got it. Dig deep. Find what's in. Find, find it. Find it. Where it's at. And I said, I was telling, I was like, dig deep, keep pushing, find that part of you that you didn't know you had. And I was like, even I got pumped when I was like, find that part of you that you didn't know you had because there's greatness in everyone. And you don't find it by just saying that you got it. You work for it. You bring it out of you. Um, and so and if you want something that you never had, you got to do something that you've never done you know, to accomplish that goal and to get where, where you want to go. Um, and so now back to my ACL tear. So my ACL tear, um, I lost my scholarship um for army because i was who was paying for the school yeah i played football but i was getting paid by the army um and i'll tell you now 19 year old me versus 26 year old me now i would have kept playing football um but the army was telling me hey you'll get back paid it's okay just keep doing the classes and whatever so i was basically you know doing those classes for free because i never got back paid i never got those you know so i lost a scholarship um and army army is like a class per semester and uh i just kept taking the classes because i was back on my feet by the next semester and they were just like hey just keep taking the classes don't do the physical stuff and because i had to get cleared by the doctor fsu football doctor and then the, they had to send the information to the army to say that i'm eligible to get my scholarship back and uh so i basically did the army stuff so that i stayed on track to graduate with the other army kids that i started with uh, but 26-year-old me, I would have paused on the Army, waited till I was fully cleared by the doctor, because I wasn't doing any physical stuff, so they weren't, like, pushing me to work out or nothing. Wait till I was fully physically cleared, got the scholarship back, then continued my classes, and just basically graduated a semester or two later, but I wouldn't have done any work for free. Because um, at that time, I was working for the Army, or doing Army stuff, working for Publix um, to get my you know cover my bills and i was doing school um but one thing that i learned about the acl tear is that life moves on whether you you know have a back um a mis like a mistake happens a disappointment happens an injury fsu football kept playing football so all those guys kept going to you know rose bowl orange bowl all sorts of stuff all that kept happening and so this is why getting caught up in other people's lanes, you know, isn't, you know, productive because you're going to have to find your way to get to where you're going, you know. And, uh, you know, um, my friends at the time really kept pushing me to get better and everything like that. But, you know, at the end of the day, it was still my path of how I was going to, you know, move forward. Um, and so you need, you know positive people in the trenches when things go bad um to keep motivating you both in good situations like i had with the 30 people around trying off for the team they're yelling at me they're pushing me and in the trenches when i had the friends getting me back on my feet helping me out um being there for me um because that was one of the lowest moments or times of my life because i was afraid the one thing i love doing running jumping cutting i could never do again um and, you know, I, I did not go back to the football team and um, I chose the army, kept, you know, and, uh, you know, now I'm st still in the army and everything. But, yeah, um, I actually didn't, you know, go back to playing football, but still having the ability of being able to run, sprint and jump. You know, I'm glad that I still have those abilities still. Um, 
And keeping those positive people around is very different than having yes men, yes women. Um, and is not the same thing as having constructive criticism to saying like, hey, you're not doing enough. Or the yes people is like, no, you're great. Keep going. And you're actually stagnant. You know, you need those people that are positive to push you, but also to tell you when you're messing up, when you're not doing enough, when you're going the wrong way. You know, you need both. Um, but you don't also don't need those negative people that are just like, I don't know if you'll ever make it. You ain't nothing. You ain't never been nothing. You ain't ever gonna be, you know. All right. I think I'm gonna, you know, separate yourself from those people because they're just holding you back. Um, and so once I got my feet, got back on my feet and everything, um, the, and that was pretty the biggest lesson from the ACL tear and the football. But after that, I went back to coaching. So I coached, uh, strength coached for FSU football and None of this is physical therapy school. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm getting, I, that's what I, I want to say. All these lessons that got me to where I am now, I'm just going to reiterate, none of this is physical therapy school. None of this is, you know, you know, directly a class or uh, observation. You know, none of this is that. So I go to coaching and at that time, I just wanted to understand both sides of the field. I wanted to understand training and I wanted to understand you know, I was already a player, so now I got to saw so saw both sides, and a lot of this translated into lessons I've learned and take with me today. And we're waking up five, four actually, because the freshmen had to be there by five. freshmen from high school on, over the summer. They had to be there at five in the morning, so we had to get up at four in the morning, three in the morning to get there by four, to set up the equipment, to set up the workouts, have everything where it's supposed to be. Um, and you had to bring, when I say you had to bring the energy, because they didn't want to be there, right? And that's going to be the same thing of when you translate to whatever business or whatever, you know, job you want to do. You got to bring that energy every day because if anyone wants to be there or has to have that energy to be there, it's you. And we had to bring it because they fed off that energy. So when you have patients, they're going to feed off that energy. If you're the doctor that's just kind of like, yeah, we're both here today. Well, they're in the worst position their legs broken their arms broken their backs hurting their necks hurting their heads hurting they don't feel good and you're i don't feel good i don't want to be here they're feeding off that and then you're going to get lackluster lackluster effort and you know there's no pro productivity no one's getting better you're not getting you're getting worse they're not feeling any better and so they're coming back you're getting bad reviews and everything like that because why you didn't bring that energy you didn't bring that that personality that whatever makes you 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 didn't bring it that day and when you don't bring it it affects other people um and also they're dependent on you for the work you got to be prepared every day for whatever you're gonna do for whatever you know um you gotta have like for the workouts you gotta have the workouts ready so they're coming in when they're coming in to get their muscles or you stronger if you're training if they're trying to um you're running a business and you got to make sure that all of the product is aligned and tagged and ready for shipment or ready for pickup and all that. You got to be ready to receive or deliver on whatever you promised your customers. If your customers are patients, if your customers are customers, if your customers are, you know, uh, people that you're training, you, you got to bring whatever preparation. You got to do more work than them, you know, so that you have a high quality product. Um, And... So one of the, the definition of army leadership is to provide motivation, direction, and purpose to your soldiers. And that's what we do in our lives. So we have to, or in our, you know, if, as physical therapists, we got to find out what motivates our people. We got to figure out how to get them to obtain their goals, your goals. And you have to find out why they're doing this or why you're doing this. Why are you trying to do this career? How are you going to get there? And what motivates you to get up every morning to do whatever that is? And what will get you doing it every single day? You know? Um, and so when I went to coaching, that's what we were doing. We were leading the team to success 
and that translates to every aspect of life for me or for me delivering a service to someone else um and so that was my lesson from coaching um and for the emergency room so later so i'm still on the medical school track still on the medical school track at this time and after i got done with my army training in virginia it was uh just my basic officer school after i graduated um, I took a risk, went across the state, went to Orlando, and I worked in the emergency room. That was an experience. I'd say, I'd say, like the first month, I probably came home and cried at least two or three times a week. You know, the first couple weeks, because you see uh, a lot. You see people pass away. You see people who are in a lot of pain. You see a lot of good things as well. Um, so I'd say, but at least two or three times a week, you know, um, because you know, it's a different mindset, but I still enjoyed the job. I loved the job. I loved working with the patients. I loved being a positive influence on um, what I did. There was a transitional care, um, representative. I helped patients find in, um, doctors, whether it was a specialist, a family doctor, um, so specialists would be physical therapy, uh, cardiology, uh, oncology, yeah, podiatry or whatever. Um, so anyways, I helped them find whatever follow-up care they needed. Um, and the, you know, most of the patients I worked with were uninsured, um, or had Medicaid. So very limited on what they could do or how they could get there. Um, and a lot of times they were just when they before I was you know the representative there at the hospital was a new program as well um they would get hey go to this doctor they didn't the doctor that told them to go to that doctor didn't know whether that doctor took their insurance whether they had available appointments some patients are going there the the emergency room told me to come here and they're like well we don't take your insurance oh okay and it's not that office's job to find a doctor that does take their insurance so the patient ends up back in the emergency room because they don't know where to go. So they're back in there. Things aren't fixed. So time's going by and they're still feeling bad. And they're going back and back and forth with not having the care or proper resource um, to help them. So I stepped in, was able to run their insurance, find a doctor that took them, got them step by step to where they needed to go. And that was a very rewarding experience. Um, sometimes it didn't work out. We weren't able to help the patient, but we helped them get somewhere, get them started. Um, and that was a risk because it was a new program. Um, so every patient, every day was a test of are they going to keep us? Are they going to keep this program? Because I was contracted with the hospital. I'm not going to say the hospital or any hospital or any job that I work at. I think I've already said one, but, you know. Because I'm not reviewing any of them. I just wanted to share my story and blah, blah, blah. Um, it was a huge risk because it was a new program. So every day was a test. Every day was like, you got to get the numbers, but you also got to provide optimal service. Um, and then I was making eight twenty five an hour. And that I think that it was the minimum wage at the time. So I'm making eight twenty five an hour. I lived by myself because it was, a you know, I... Yeah, it would be cheaper if I had roommates, but I didn't know anybody, so I'm not going to move across state to a place where I don't know anybody. So I got an apartment, live by myself. I was working three jobs. So I worked at the hospital, I worked at Publix, and I worked for the Army. So I had three jobs, and um, it was a risk because the hospital didn't cover all my expenses. Publix, so I worked from the hospital eight to eight to four, eight to five, go to Publix, work from Publix to 6 to 11, and then go back to the hospital, you know, blah, 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 and rinse, repeat. Eventually, I started working at Publix overnight, so it was like midnight to 7, and then I work at the hospital from 8 to 5, and so it was just, boom, constantly circulating. And the only time I had off was when I worked for the hospital because the National Guard worked once a month. So that schedule was crazy. On my lunch breaks, I would sleep in my car, um, and then I I wouldn't eat. I would just sleep in the car, go back, and eat at my desk and in between patients. Um, and, and so that was so. hey, you're not allowed to eat at your desk. So, well, you could, you weren't, yeah, you weren't allowed to eat at your desk. So 
we, I got told that and ended up having to like eat really quick and then sleep, you know, for the rest of the lunch break. Um, but I don't regret that at all because, you know, that was, I loved, I did love working there. I did love that job. I loved working with the patients. I loved, you know, and it helped with learning about bedside manner. It helped learn about insurance because I really didn't know. They really don't, like, we really need lessons on insurance and finances and blah. That just needs to be in high school. I'm sorry, but, like, I feel like that is, like, that's a, my own soapbox. And I feel like this is already a soapbox. But I'm, that's a whole nother conversation about insurance. And how it works and blah, blah, blah. That's a whole whole nother feel. Um, but I loved it. And you, like, have to... Yeah, I was making $8 and I was pennies, you know. Um, in the grand scheme of things. I had student loans I was paying for and stuff like that, you know. Um, and so... But, you know, when you really love to do something, it motivates you to get up regardless of how much money you're going to make. Um, and um, another thing is, uh, too, I, um, I worked with the insurance and the patients and everything. I worked around, alongside social workers as well. Um, and this is kind of what led me into physical therapy school because I saw them work with finding out home health care. Um, which, you know, uh, which is his own thing, um, retirement homes. And I saw older people like actually getting the help they needed and evaluate it properly. And it kind of led me into physical therapy, um, where I was like, Oh, I think I'm going to go back to my roots of, you know, biomechanics and working and out and physical growth and, um, you know, building a community because I feel like, you know, it's building a community um, and building up people because the, the building that relationship, when you're down on your your knee, like when I hurt my knee, my best friend was my athletic trainer. Um, he was with me, like getting my, I was like, am I going to be able to sprint again? You know, and for everyday people, it might be, will I be able to hold my kids again? You know, will I be able to go for walks with my dog again? You know, um, Will I be able to talk again, you know, uh, if they had a stroke or something? Um, will I always have this limp? You know, just, um, and everyone has their different struggle, you know, um, of different things that they're dealing with. And so, um, or you're just born with a, a disability, you know, and you have to learn how to, you know, walk and everything like that, um, and so, you know, we're, we're privileged to have, be able body if you are able body. So always remember that. Um, not everybody's privileged to have all of the, you know, um, abilities that we have every day. Um, and so I said, okay, physical therapy school. And uh, so would that mean? That mean that I had to figure out how the heck do I go to physical therapy school? What are the requirements to get in? Because it was all med school there. I knew that track. I knew what I needed. I knew the classes. I knew the hours. I knew all that. So I did what any logical person would do. Went to an advisor. And so I go to an advisor. Um, again, won't say the school. And I get there and I bring my transcripts, my test scores, my resume, my observation hours, uh, everything. My, my, this is me on paper. And uh, she's like, I just finished inputting your grades and you wouldn't get past the first wave. And I'm like, well, what about all this experience? And she's like, they weed you out right there. You're, you don't get past that first wave. It doesn't matter if you had a million hours of experience. Um, you you got to get past that first wave. So I said, okay, so what do I do? She said, well, these are the average GPAs of all of our students for the last three, four years. These are our average GRE scores for the last three, four years. And she said, I'd probably just start retaking these prereqs. So that's, I mean, and when I left that office... It, my car was on the other side of campus. And so I had to walk all the way back to my car. And at that moment, I felt like the biggest outsider 
and I felt like all these people are where I want to be and I worked so hard to get just to here you know and I'm still not there I'm like still a ways to go because retaking these classes was two years away you know I had to I'd retake every one of them, every one of them. And I had to get an A in every one of them because they averaged the grades. So you got an A, only A's. Um, and so, I mean, um, there was like, I went to a couple of friends and one of my friends uh, probably told me the best advice. Um, and uh, like, well, I'm just... It was the best advice. He was like, how many people do you know get told exactly how to get to where they want to go? And I was like, yeah, I, I guess so. I like I, I she told me exactly what I needed to do to get to where I wanted to go. And uh, yeah, I. I was wipe my tears or whatever and we went to Wendy's and I got me a Baconator I was like alright greasy foods and great advice that's all I needed and uh, so that, that was that was a good day and so yeah I mean I wrote down because uh, I was moving in with my girlfriend at the time fiance wife now um, and so I went and researched all the schools near where she lived um Knew I was gonna be the oldest one, um, in the class or one of the oldest people in the classrooms. I just had accepted because they were freshmen, sophomore, basic level classes that I'm retaking, and uh, you know, ma mapped it out. I mapped out if I got into this school, I'll do this. If I got into this school, I do this. If I went here, did that, and mapped it out. And over the next two, three years. Um, I went to school, worked part-time, but full-time hours. If you ever work part-time, you know what that is. Um, and I mean, there was days, there was this one time I worked for the army and I forgot all my books at home and I worked for the army six hours away from where we lived at the time. And I had to drive all the way back cause I had an assignment, like once my army responsibilities were up, I drove, drove six, seven hours back. It was a different time zone, so I had an hour. I got home at like 11, assignments due at midnight. On the way home, she was like, um, hey, are you hungry? And I was like, no. By the time I got to the, the door, I was hungry. She had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich waiting for me. And was like, good luck, hope you do well. And I finished my assignment right in time. I think mean, I don't know what it was. It wasn't too hard, but I got it done in an hour. But I did as much as I could without my books and uh you know just experiences like that over the last ne next two years um led me to getting accepted first time first time applying um and you know I took on whatever I, military uh, opportunities I could um I knew exactly what classes that I had to take I mapped it out he um you had to, you know, I had to, I had to work at Publix. There was no, there was no way I couldn't, I couldn't afford not to, because I still had to pay for the classes, pay for my loans, pay for my car, I still had bills. Um, and you know, in in your path to where you want to go, you might have to do some things you don't want to do, but something each week or each day or each month has to be towards what you want to do. Um something you got to write it even if it's just you're writing down on a piece of paper what you got to do to get to where you want to go you got to do something you got to find out what it is you want to do you got to find out how to get there you might have to do some dead-end work um but you know um and I think, I think I'll, I think I'll stop there. Cause I, uh, from there, you know, over the next two years, I got accepted into uh, physical therapy school first try. Um, so I'm starting, like I said, in the next, next 
next month. Um, and uh, yeah, there, there were some, I, I say it's fear, a discourager or a motivator. And, you know, I was afraid that I wouldn't make it a lot, a lot of times along the way. Um, but I, I just accomplished little things. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, kept, kept trying, just keep trying. Um, so that's my path on how I got to just to the door. This is the door of physical therapy school. This is the, my path on how I got to the door. Um, a few of these things that we talked about, I feel like in the next coming weeks or months, I'll break them down a little bit more. Maybe you'll go really into the football. Maybe the fun side of football. Because all I said about football is I tore my ACL. Um, but I had a really uh, great time playing football for FSU. Uh, maybe show off the jersey and the rings and stuff. Just because I never do that. that, that I, I got it and put it put it away. But that's my path to physical therapy school. Your path will be different. It will look different to wherever you're trying to go. But whatever it is, make it your own. Learn from the people around you. Find a team that will support you. Get rid of all the negative people. And try your hardest every day. Even if your hardest is writing something down to say, I'll do it later. Um. So this is Dr. Swole, a.k.a. EJ. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something about me. Hope you learn something about what you can do moving forward in life. Um, I definitely enjoy just sitting here chit-chatting. In the future, this will be a live stream um, where we have that back and forth right now. I do not have a computer that can support video stream. It's a 2014 uh, and basic computer. So I'm going to just pre-record them for now, but... Follow me on YouTube, catch me on Instagram for the quick updates, and I'll be live on Twitch. Check out the stream schedule. Dr. Swole, DPT, out.